Nine. Brought to you by Kellogg's, the folks who bring the best to you each morning, the widest choice of cereals in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And now it's a great pleasure to introduce to our panel a new guest panelist who has just dashed over here from the famous New York nightclub, the Copacabana, where he is appearing as the headliner, a very special comedian, Mort Saul. And on my left, to see a brilliant and beautiful young lady who is my friend, among other distinctions, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman, publisher, whose newest publication is a book called The Quick Rich Fox by Isabel Dave. And he's a quick rich fox himself, or wolf, Bennett Cerf. <laughs> Quick, anyhow. <laughs> and now through these portals will pass the gentleman, and a gentleman he is to his fingertips, who is our panel moderator on What's My Line, John Charles Davis. Well, finally down from Canada came some lovely cool weather, and you can see the effect it's had on Bennett already. Nice to meet tonight. So I'll be nice to the panel tonight and make the cudgeling they're going to get as painless as possible. We have some very interesting occupations and some nice people who brought them here. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger after this. Now let's meet our first challenger. Would you come in and sign in, please? Dixie. Dixie Lee. I can only presume, is it Miss or Mrs. Lee? Miss. Miss Lee, I can only presume that normally you write with that right hand That's of right. yours. <laughs> well, I want to congratulate you. You did a fine Thank job you. with the left. And I hope the young man recovers soon. <laughs> now, where are you from? I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. Miss Lee from Jacksonville, the panel. Hello. Panel, Miss Lee, would you join me over here now, please? Tell me, Miss Lee, do you know how we keep score and what's my line? Yes, I do. In that event, let's let the folks at home and those who've been good enough to come and join us in the audience here in the theater know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we will tell you that Miss Lee is self-employed. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Cerf. Well, Miss Lee, I'm going to ask you a question. If the answer is no, it's a disgrace. Have you got anything whatever to do with show business? Yes. Oh. Let me say that here, I would agree fully with Miss Lee that we use the term very broadly, show business. Uh, do you appear in some way before some part of the public? Yes. Is it a sort of a special part of the public rather than a, gen a general audience? No, I, I wouldn't say so. No, I would say this, that to the degree you would, you know, classify the well, audience... Might, she might be a model of some sort. No, you call the audience a general audience. Mm -hmm. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Lee, do both men and women watch you do whatever it is you do? Yes. Could children watch too? Yes. Uh, when you are not bandaged, do you use both hands in what you do? Yes. Do you move about at all? Yes. Uh, do you work near or on or in the water? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Saul. 
And did you pick up that bandage in your work? Yes. Uh, do you ever work covered with grease? Pardon? Do <laughs> you ever work covered with grease? No. No, that's three down to seven to go, Miss Francis. Do you work uh, ever with animals? Yes. Uh, is the animal or are the animals ever in any way dangerous? Might they be considered such by... Yes. Uh, when you perform your... Uh, uh, may I assume that these animals are not horses? No. They are not horses. Uh, is it an animal that has no legs whatsoever? An animal no. has no legs whatsoever. I, we'd have to say no to that, wouldn't we? Yes, we'd I think have we'd have to, to say no to that. It's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Lee, is it an animal that might be found in the Everglades? I would say that if you found one in the Everglades, he or she would be in real tough shape along about then. So we'll give you a no. That's five down or five to go, Miss Kilgallen. I have to find out more about this animal. You picked up the bandage in the course of your work. Yes. You do not deal with horses. No. You do not deal with animals which have no legs, which I would assume would rule out fish and snakes, right? That's right. OK so far? <laughs> the Everglades is full of birds, isn't it? And alligators. Amongst th other things. Uh, may, may I assume that you are not with the birds? Well, no. <laughs> then do the animals that you deal with have more than two legs? Yes. Do they have four? Yes. Are they smaller than horses? Horses are, well, they run to sizes now, don't they? they well, I can ask yeah. another question. We'll have to have a small conference. I'm awfully sorry. Sometimes. Are these animals ever hunted by big game hunters? Are they ever hunted by big game hunters? Such these as animals. These, well, not her animals, but animals similar to these. Mm -hmm. okay. hmm? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. That's my girl. Six down and four to go, Mr. Saul. Well, Miss Lee, if we wouldn't interpret this as, uh, it doesn't, uh, you and these animals are not, it, uh, it wouldn't come under the, uh, I'm very clear about this, and I hope you can make it. <laughs> I've learned to live within myself, but uh, you don't provide entertainment. Do you provide transportation? No. <laughs> Boy! Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Well, now, since these would not be hunted by big game hunters, might they ever in any way be considered domestic animals? Oh, yes. They are? Oh, yes. Could they ever be found uh, on or about a farm? Yes. Uh, are these raised in captivity? Yes. Uh, do they have uh, a coat of fur rather than just a hide? No. That makes it eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Ah, they have, they have a hide but no fur. Uh, that would... Uh, you say anything about Yule Brynner, I'll run you right off the show. I wasn't even thinking of Yule Brynner. <laughs> Might these animals, Miss Lee, be even vaguely connected with the pig family? No. No, no. that's nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, may we assume that if they have no fur, they also have no fleece? Because we were once fleeced on that question. I no, think Bennett got no in trouble. Uh, are these animals edible? Yes. Is there any product of theirs which is edible or drinkable? Pardon, I didn't is there some other product besides the animal itself? such as milk from a cow or goat from a cheese or... or goat from a cheese? <laughs> and I would say this, Dorothy, as I flip the last card, I think what you just said is a lot of bull. And... 
Lee is Lee a bullfighter. What? Oh. <laughs> came very close. Came very close. And actually, this uh, bad right hand here comes you from. Think um, that would have an, helped us, but it didn't. It, it might have helped you. I hadn't had time to ask Miss Lee whether she let the bull get to her first or whether she just got mad at the bull and hit him right in the <laughs> nose, but. In Nogales, I think it was, That's just a right. few days ago, she caught a horn. I caught a horn tip on there, did you? That's right. Yeah. Spoils the manicure, doesn't I it? I thought Debbie Reynolds was the only lady bullfighter in America. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what bull did she throw? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get it and start it well, I think that's enough. We mustn't let this cool weather go to our heads. That's all there is to it. No, but I must say that I think it will not surprise any of you, and I could see that Bennett got started on that line of questioning. Miss Lee, before she took up bullfighting, which was three years ago, was a model in here in New York, I believe. That's right. And she's been fighting bulls for three years and uh, has had her share of the bumps, as they say, in the business. But uh, she's uh, a successful bullfighter. As I understand anything about success in bullfighting, I think it's a great game to read about myself, but then, <laughs> thank you very much thank for being our guest, and I much. hope that heals very quickly. Nice to have you. All right, panel, let's see what we can do with a second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? J. A. Conlon. Is that right, sir? <laughs> Mr. Conlon, where are you from? I'm from Burke, Virginia. Burke, Virginia. Mr. Conlon, panel. Panel, Hello. Mr. Conlon. Would you join me here, please, sir? You know how we keep score, sir? Yes, I do. All right, then let's let everybody except our friends over there on the panel know exactly what your line is. Mr. Conlon is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Uh, Mr. Conlon, can men and women enjoy your services? <laughs> I'd say yes. <clears throat> to the men degree and women that out there a, did. To the degree there's a service here involved, we can assume that one end result of the full application of the service would be enjoyable, yes. Well. Hello? I'm no father of <laughs> Uh, is it a service, however, that you uh, yes. perform? Well, he does, but as I say again, it's, you know, in everything there is an element of service. Do you work for a non-profit make making organization? <laughs> yes. Is it any branch of any government? It is. Would it be the federal government? Yes. Are you in your job usually are you in different places in your job rather than at one particular place? Yes. When you mean several places... Uh, by that I mean, would he be transported or would he transport from place to place rather than be in one place? Are you speaking in terms of from city to city or state to state? Or country to country, yes. Or country to country. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot. That would be one down and nine to go, right? Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Sir. Mr. Mr. Conlon, will you allow me to make an experience? explanatory remark. I'm worried about what I said about Debbie Reynolds being a bullfighter. She is in her newest picture called It Started With a Kiss. I meant nothing personal about it. You can, listen, you just tuck your little old conscience back well, in your pocket. Well, she's one of the nicest Nobody girls I know, and I'm not going to have anybody think I said something mean about it. Did we get some letters already? It's all... <laughs> right. I wanted to be sure that was clear. <laughs> Mr. Conlon, pardon me. Uh, is there any product involved with what you do, Mr. Conlon? Yes. There is a product. Yes, and you And you use this product for the federal government. Yes. Uh, is the branch of the federal government you're connected with, by any chance, connected with any punitive work? No. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. And we may rule out the FBI? You may. Uh, is... Uh money involved in what you do? Yes. 
because I consider that a splendid product if you can just get your hands on enough of it. Uh, do you have anything to do with the making or distributing or washing or drying of money? That's a pretty broad well, field, yes. Well, I, I know, but we have some pretty broad <laughs> contestants on here. We once had a woman who washed and ironed money. That's what I want to know. Uh, well, do, do you have something to do with, with money? Yes. Um, are you connected with uh, either a, a fort or a mint where money is made or kept? A fort or a mint, no. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Saul. Would you say that people resent what you do? <laughs> no. No, that's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Do you disperse monies in your job in any way? No, I do not. Five down and five to go, Mr. Mr. Sir. Mr. Conlon, do you have anything to do with the printing of new money? Yes. That's basic for you. Bennett, I think we have to give it to... Still, I've got to flip all the rest of those things. Bennett had it right because Mr. Conlon is the assistant chief of the currency and stamp production for the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, which prints money. And he has the joy of, of uh, supervising and controlling and operating those wonderful presses out of which pour millions of dollars. Going to give millions. him samples tonight, Mr. Conlon? Should I? <laughs> yeah, give him a sample. Exactly. This is Mr. A Conlon came prepared to give samples. This is a question that's so often asked. Mr. Daly? Thank you very much. We also print postage stamps. <laughs> <laughs> and there are here five... Four cent United States postage stamps, one for each of you and one for me, and we have With our sample. The new sample. flag? That's the multicolor stamp. Yes. The new multicolor. 49 stars. The new flag. That's now, nice. Now tell me, what are you going to do if you haven't sold all these 49 star stamps by July 4th next when the 50th stamp becomes effective? I mean, well, the 50th star. We not only sold the initial issue, but we had to go to the press twice thereafter. Uh -huh. And in 19, the next issue in July 4th next year, we'll have a 50 star flag, we suppose. 50 star flags. And Mr. You, Connell, you, will you bring those stamps with you? I don't trust Mr. Daly. <laughs> <laughs> John, I should leave one with you then. Thank you. I wouldn't trust him with mine either. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you with And now we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I ask my friends to blindfold themselves. Panel, are the blindfolds all in place? Mm -hmm. yes, yes. All set, Miss Arlene? All right, well, our mystery challenger, come in and sign in, please. of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You will ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin it with uh, Mort Saul. Uh, were, uh, were you married out of the country this week? <laughs> in my case, that question is ridiculous. <laughs> one down and nine to go. Miss Fred. Uh, have you appeared in the theater? Oh, that question could be answered in the affirmative, yes. Mr. Sir. Have you recently participated in the making of some very expensive motion picture? Oh, uh, that question could also be answered in the affirmative, yes. <laughs> Ms. Kilgallen. Are you a singer as well as an actor? <laughs> that question has been answered in the affirmative in the past, yes. And do you do the singing in motion pictures? Oh, uh, in that case, the question must be answered with a negative, no. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Oh, then you have appeared in a musical uh, on the stage rather than in motion pictures, is that correct? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> that it? Have we ever had the extreme pleasure of having you sit right here on this panel with us? Oh, well, that question could be answered in the affirmative, yes. You want to go, Betty? Do you think it I would think it might be Tony Randall. I think it might be Randall. <laughs> Ms. 
Two girls. I don't know. <laughs> you mean I talk that way all the time? All the time. <laughs> it's funny, though. You know, it was a wonderful disguise, Tony, but your inflections, your speech inflections still have held steady. Did you hear them, Bennett? In the affirmative. In the affirmative. In the affirmative. <laughs> you know, but the inflections, well, the, the pacing of the speech. In New York. Was I beg your pardon? We're in a musical show here last year. That's right. Oh, Captain. Oh, Captain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's, just, uh, <laughs> he's just finished another cinema, too, which has an interesting title. Well, I asked where you'd been. I hadn't seen you. And they said you were making pillow talk. Yes. And I've heard all kinds of talk, but this pillow talk is new to me. But I understand you made pillow talk with Doris Day as one of your co-stars. Yes, and Rock Hudson and Thelma Ritter. Well, I just felt that making pillow talk with Doris Day might be very, very... Uh, you can't beat that. Yes, That's right. I, was, yeah. I, don't know I bet you got Thelma Ritter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did we get uh, that him? question could be answered in the negative. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> a wonderful woman and a great act actress. It's wonderful to have you back with us. I must say that I always like to see you sitting over there, but I like to have you here beside me, too, because you can see what I have to look yes. at night uh, after night. In all the time room. we've known each other, this is really the closest we've ever been to That's each other. That's right. Yes. Well, we worked <laughs> yes. across the stage. Yes. Sir, thank you very much. Thank and you. Come back and join us over there. I will indeed. Nice to see you. Sir. Have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now let's meet another challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Right there. Erland. Stevens, right, sir? <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Stevens, where are you from? I'm from Arlington, Virginia. From Arlington, Virginia. With your permission, I'm going to say that Mr. Stevens is attending college. He has a very interesting summer occupation, which is why he's here with us. Will you come and join me over here, please? You know how we keep score? Yes, sir. All right, then let's let the audience here in the theater and the folks at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. Mr. Stevens is salaried. And let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Stevens, do you work for a profit-making organization? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Saul. And uh, does this have anything to do with what you're studying? No, it doesn't. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Uh, Mr. Stevens, do you in your work uh, uh, conduct or advise people in any way? No, I don't. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Stevens, you work for a non-profit-making organization. Might that be some form of government? Yes, sir. It would. Would it be state or local rather than federal? Yes. Is it a state government? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. And is it a local government? Yes, it is. Uh, are you functioning in any capacity that has anything to do with the law? No. I don't. Uh, that's five down and five to go, Mr. Salt. Are people happy to see you in uh, your work? <laughs> yes, I guess. If they think about it seriously, Mort, they will be. <laughs> do they think about it in the water? Excuse me? Do they think about it in the water? I wouldn't think no. so. Not his work. That's six <laughs> out of four to go, Miss Francis. Uh, do you work it all out of doors, Mr. Stevens? Yes, I do. Uh, do you have anything to do with something that might happen in a park or a, uh, a park? No. That's seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Now, we haven't eliminated, we have eliminated the law, haven't we? Yes. Uh, does the work that you do, Mr. Stevens, make the city a little cleaner or more beautiful? Yes. Does. does it make it cleaner? Yes. Are you well, connected no, with it? No, no, no I wouldn't say cleaner, Bennett. Actually, we've run out of time. I think you're beginning to get close to it now, because after Mr. Stevens has done his work, there can be no question about the city being much more beautiful than it was before, because he paints fire hydrants for Arlington County. <laughs> to say so that everybody understands Erland's response. He's got 2,400 fire hydrants to take care of and go to, he goes to Penn State, too, in the, in the uh, winter time. And now, until next week, having said only this last word, it's nice to have had you with us, Mort. Good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Mort, and we'll be watching you on the Revlon show on the same network. Thank you, Dorothy. Good night, Arlene. Goodbye. You're very shy tonight, Mort.
I can't relate. <laughs> You're great. Good night, Bennett. But there's a stamp on you. She's, I'm going to send myself. She's still I... chasing the U.S. mails. <laughs> Good night, John. Oh, no. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. Transportation for contestants in What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. This is Hal Sims speaking.